Hey, we're continuing in our series on the doctrine of God, and just a couple of introductory comments. Uh, I think that probably the main um, concerns that I have um, have come back to me has been um, people stating that they would prefer the Word of God over theology, and just wanted to remind everyone that the proper definition of theology is the application of all of the Word of God to all of life. That is, applying all, applying to all of life, all of the Word of God. And in systematic theology, which we are doing, it's uh, asking, what does the whole of the Word of God say about a particular subject? And I say that because I know that many people have had a bad experience with theology. For example, their old or New Testament professor in college or even in high school. So I just wanted to remind people that my conception of theology is the Word of God, and that's what drives me. Secondly, if this series is helping you, would you help me by um, spreading the word? I know there's a lot of people out there who are hungry for meat and they just don't know where to find it. So if you could help me uh, by spreading the word, um, I would really appreciate that. Thank you. Alrighty. I'll, I'm going to do, I'm going to read from the Word of God first and then announce the topic. How's that? Uh, reading from the beginning of the, uh, the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20, starting at verse 1. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. And then moving down. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. And then, quoting from Exodus 34, you shall tear down their altars and break their pillars and cut down their ashram. For you shall worship no other God. For the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land. And when they whore after their gods and sacrifices to their gods, and you are invited and eat of this sacrifice. A topic in this series, in this segment, rather, is the jealousy of God. Now, the reason why I have this up close <clears throat> is because I just simply can't see. So I apologize if my face is too close to you, but I need to see what I'm reading. So, it's, most of you probably are listening to this in, in a car anyway and not watching it. But, in our last segment, we talked about the amazing love of God, right? But this time, we're looking at the jealousy of God. And you're thinking, what? The jealousy of God? It seems contradictory to everything that we said about God so far. I remember recently somebody on Facebook mentioned the jealousy of God and one reader went ballistic, man. What do you mean God is jealous? That's crazy. My God is a God of love. He would never be jealous. To which I would reply, exactly. Since God is a God of love, indeed, God is love and loving, he must be jealous. True love entails jealousy. A jealous, less love implies indifference in a heartless relationship. God is who he reveals who he is to us, and not whom we want or expect him to be. It's really quite arrogant 
for us to build God in our image. Um, what we expect or want him to be. We are committed to sola scriptura, scripture alone as our guide as to understanding whom God is. If you don't like this idea of God being jealous, then I would just gently but firmly ask you to clo close, put your hand over your mouth in humility <clears throat> and learn because you just heard it from God's word. You know, not only does the Bible say that God is jealous, but it says it right in the middle of the Bible, at least the Old Testament, so to speak, right in the middle of the giving of the Ten Commandments. I mean, how, how more central could you get? Verse 5 talks about not having any other gods. Why? Because I'm a jealous God. And then it gets better. God says his name is jealous in verse 14. His very name is jealous. I can't think, now correct me if I'm wrong, but I can't think of another attribute of God that he explicitly confirms as his very name. He says, you want to know who I am? My name is Jealous. Now, I realize that he says to Moses, you know, what is your name? Is Yahweh? That is his covenantal name. But as far as like attributes, I can't think of any of the attributes where they actually says this is his name. So obviously God himself is putting by way of stating that it's his name and then the very fact that its placement at the, at the beginning of the constitution of the covenant the Ten Commandments, which is the heart of the Constitution, God's moral law to his people today as well, um, says he is jealous. So that's something that I know has really been overlooked. In fact, very little is said about this attribute of jealousy. Um, for those of you who are familiar with uh, theology, uh, one of the most well-known theological textbooks is um, Louis Burkhoff's Systematic. And in, in his otherwise excellent systematic theology, he doesn't even mention this attribute of God. And neither does Oliver Buswell, who was connected with Co Covenant Seminary, Seminary. Now, Wayne Grudem, who has an excellent um, systematic as well as John Frame who both of these guys I would uh, recommend very highly um, especially Frame I mean they're both great but um, they're they both have short but succinct treatments of it but it, it's like I said it's short so it's amazing how little literature there is on the topic of God's jealousy, um, how little there is compared to obviously how important and how much uh, significance God himself places on his, his jealousy. But that the Lord would connect it intimately with the giving of the Ten Commandments and call his name jealous indicates that to God anyway, it is a vital trait of his character. It is the passionate face of God's love. You know, we spoke of God's love, as I said last time, and jealousy is a necessary element of love, human or divine. It shows how intensely personal God's love is for us. Um, he's, his love is not like a divine rock or an immovable mover of Aristotle. 
God is in, he's intensely um, Trinitarian personal in um, the way he interacts with us. In every context in which jealousy is mentioned, the jealousy of God, it is concerned with his covenant people committing idolatry, worshiping other false gods, every single time. And idolatry to God is not just some theological aberration, but it's spiritual adultery with all that that entails. And God's emotions are infinite. So when they are agitated, um, there's a deep cauldron of uh, response to uh, his jealous love. So, but he mainly expresses that he is jealous for his own glory. The Hebrew word gana and the Greek word zealous uh, indicate that uh, je jealousy is a passionate zeal to guard the exclusiveness of a marriage relationship, which may lead to anger if the spouse is unfaithful. In the book of James, our Lord's brother is talking about how we should avoid adultery with the world. And then he then says, which is interesting because he's talking about spiritual adultery. He then says, Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that Scripture says, and listen to this, he yearns jealously over the spirit he has made to dwell in us. James 4, 4 through 5. God yearns jealously, jealously over the spirit he's made in us. It's a maker. Uh, amazing. Um, and speaking of maker, Isaiah 54 says, For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And the Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. The God of the whole earth, he is called. And there's a quote from um, Wayne Grudem. Although the word, word jealous is frequently used in a negative sense in English, it also takes a positive sense at times. For example, Paul says to the Corinthians, I feel a divine jealousy for you, 2 Corinthians 11.2. Here the sense is earnestly protective or watchful. It has the meaning of being deeply committed to seeking the honor or welfare of someone, whether oneself or someone else. Scripture represents God as being jealous in this way. He continually and earnestly seeks to protect his own honor. He commands his people not to bow down to idols or serve them, saying, For I the Lord, your God, and a jealous God, Exodus 25, which we read. He desires that worship be given to him and not to false gods. Therefore, he commands the people of Israel to tear down the altars of pagan gods in the lands of Canaan, giving the following reason, quote, For you shall worship no other God, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Exodus 34, 14, and the cliff note, Deuteronomy 4, 24, and chapter 5, verse 9. Thus, God's jealousy may be defined, and this is where I'm picking up on my own. His jealousy may be defined as follows. God's jealousy means that God continually and passionately seeks to protect his own honor. Over and over and over, God's jealousy is connected to his being our husband, and idolatry is likened to spiritual adultery. Divine jealousy is angry love, not murderous rage like we're familiar with, but righteous, angry love over a lover who has spurned him. The covenant with God is like marriage, or I really should say it's the reverse. Human marriage is like our covenant with God, 
that's the argument in um, Ephesians 5. God says, I, I, want, I want your exclusive commitment. I demand it. And you see, the Ten Commandments, y'all, are not busy work. They are expressions of covenant fidelity, exclusive loyalty to a jealous God. First, this jealousy is in relation to himself, as we saw. People sometimes have trouble thinking that jealousy is a desirable attribute in God. This is because jealousy for our honor as human beings is almost always wrong. We are not to be proud but humble, yet we must realize that the reason pride is wrong is a theological reason. It is that we do not deserve the honor that belongs to God alone. 1 Corinthians 4, 7 and Revelations 4, 11. It is not wrong for God to seek his own honor. However, for he deserves it fully. In fact, it's, it's, it'd be wrong for him to not seek his own honor. God freely admits that his actions in creation and redemption are done for his own honor. Speaking of his decision to withhold judgment from his people, God says in Isaiah, For my own sake, for my own sake, I do it. My glory I will not give to another. Isaiah 48:11. It is healthy for us spiritually when we settle in our hearts the fact that God deserves all honor and glory from his creation and that it is right for him to seek this honor. He alone is infinitely worthy of being praised. To realize this fact and to delight in, in it is to find the secret of true worship. God's jealousy is related to our relationship with him. The two are connected because through our actions we can either acknowledge God's glory or not. When God says, I am the Lord your God, at the beginning of the Ten Commandments, that is a language of covenant commitment, like marriage. If you're married, there are good things that may provoke to jealousy, may provoke your spouse to jealousy. It might be your golf game, it might be fishing, your time with the girls, ministry, busyness, the kids, the, you fill in the blank. Coming before the spouse. Okay? Any of these good things may rightly cause a godly jealousy in a spouse. Anything that takes away from exclusive priority. You would be right to gently confront your spouse about not making your relationship a top priority, right? Well, the same thing, much more so with God. He insists on being priority one. God as Lord demands that he be first in our affections. The context for all discussions of God's jealousy, as I mentioned, is idolatry. Either thinking back to the gods of Egypt or being corrupted by the filthy gods of Canaan. God's jealousy is angry and confrontive, but it continues to be loving. He demands that he be priority one. That's the whole point of the first three or four commandments, if not all ten of them, but especially the first four. Which is again interesting and instructive that talking about his jealousy is right there in, in the midst of the his discussion of, of uh, idolatry. What is, a, what is a great commandment? 
that summarizes the entire Bible. You know what it is. That big thick book that, that we read, several thousand pages, can be summarized. Love God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's it. Your neighbor is yourself. But first, loving God with all of your being. Priority one. You know, idols are not just metal, but mental as well. That's true for us today. I don't see too many. I know that they are, but uh, most of our idols are mental. Um, the same things can cause deprioritization in a marriage that we uh, that I mentioned earlier uh, are the same as in a relationship with the Lord. Any of the good things that he's blessed us with, like hobbies, exercise, relationships, kids, spouse, our search for happiness, all these things can be good. But if they are put in as our dominant life value, i.e. our God, our idol, has to go. And it does arouse God's jealousy. God's jealousy is not just something for other people. It's how he relates to you and to me. Life happens, but as a general rule, what is your first priority in the morning? I've tried to prioritize my time with God in the morning and to jealously guard it. What are your priorities in the morning? Discipline is important. You know, just as you must prioritize your spouse, whether you feel like it or not on any particular day, you simply must prioritize them because that is the covenant commitment. Feelings aside, they are your priority. Similarly, we must not be quote, what I call sensuous Christians, that is, ruled by our feelings. I think God is most pleased when we seek him early, especially when we don't feel like it. He is our husband and lover, as Isaiah said, before whom we can be naked and ashamed due to Christ's righteousness, which covers us. Husbands should love their wives as Christ has loved the church. And he deserves and demands our exclusive love, worship, and obedience. Remember, jealousy is part of God's love. His jealousy shows that he wants intimacy with us. God is not interested in disinterested obedience. You can see that in the Ten Commandments. This is what he's stating from the very outset. I don't want your disinterested obedience. I am a jealous God. He wants our hearts, all of us. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. So whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. And then again, that text in James 4, the Lord's brother saying, God jealously desires our spirit. You know, what it is that we fixate on and think about most during the day. He jealously desires that we would fixate on him. You know, few things in a marriage can cause more pain and anguish than infidelity. Breaking the sacred covenant vows of marriage and having sex with another man or woman, that is devastating. The jealousy that a husband or wife feels over a cheating spouse is entirely appropriate. Indeed, something would be wrong if they didn't feel jealous. It, it must not turn into a murderous rage, but those of us who have experienced know the horror 
of crazy feelings it causes, the churning cauldron of dark emotions, and the deep scars it can leave. I remember when I was in my 20s when a, a former roommate discovered that his wife had been unfaithful. And he uh, told me that he was reading a book called, called Crazy Time. Yeah, I think that's the name of it. And he said that's exactly what he was experiencing, Crazy Time. Um, the, um, the mixture uh, of intense emotions that come with it and um, have, you know, experiencing the one who knows you the best having make it a, a sacred vow before God and, and being unfaithful and uh, the pain that that, that caused. And then God uses that analogy and says, you think that's painful? I feel that on a infinitely more intense uh, level when you put me to the side. See, one thing that strikes me as I read the prophets in the Old Testament, which I wish and encourage you to do, when I read the prophets like I, uh, Isaiah and particularly Ezekiel, I don't know how to say it, but it's I'm reminded, reminded it's like uh, the, the wild passionate zeal that God has for us and the shocking images that the Lord uses to express the outrage and pain he feels over the spiritual adultery of his people. You know, though the word jealousy may not be explicitly present in some of these contexts that I'm referring to in Ezekiel, the substance is there. The confrontive anger of love spurned and jealousy is everywhere present in the prophets. He speaks of their whoring. I mean, this is strong language. Uh, you can just feel and hear God, the anguish in God's heart. He's talking about whoring after other gods. He doesn't say just going after other gods. He's, t he's talking in terms of whoring after other gods. Spiritual adultery. Sometimes, particularly in Ezekiel, it, it, using shocking images one would never hear from a modern pulpit. <laughs> How can we not be affected to the core of our being when our Creator and dear Redeemer is basically saying, You, my bride, have left me, lusting and whoring after other gods. It distresses my heart to no end. Do you view your sin in that light? Your idolatry and how it deeply affects God. You know, I've experienced, uh, I've experienced the anguish of an unfaithful spouse, and 20 years later, it still hurts. And it astonishes me that God loves us so much that he would feel jealousy. We come to the New Testament, and God is just as jealous, desiring and demanding that he be first in our affections. Jealousy is an aspect of his love. It opens our eyes to the fact of how deeply our actions and attitudes affect the living God. We grieve the Spirit. In light of God's love, his infinite loveliness and dignity poured out his grace on spiritually dead, hell-deserving sinners. And then it says in Ephesians, But God, God rescued us from clear, present, and eternal danger by cursing his Son for our covenant infidelity. 
in order that we may experience his eternal blessedness. How can we neglect such a great salvation? It was God's jealousy that provoked him to earnestly seek out his wayward bride and cleanse her. See, godly jealousy will not stand by while the beloved is in distress, even if it's self-caused. For God's glory is bound up with the welfare of his bride. That's how he has ordained it to be. And God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in him, as Dr. John Piper puts it, or to state it another way. God is most glorified through our enjoyment of him. I'll say it again. God is glorified through our enjoyment of him. Shorter Catechism says that the chief end of man is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. And the way I would put it is to say that God is glorified through our enjoyment of him. Do not settle for mediocre marriage with your human spouse. You don't want that. But especially don't settle for mediocrity, mediocrity in your relationship, your marriage, your covenant with God. One thing I regularly pray is this, Lord, Help me to walk as intimately with you as is possible this side of heaven. And please put a short leash on me, gently but quickly pull me back when I stray in my spirit. If the father ever has to choose between the singular honor and dignity of his son and our religious whims, he will always choose the honor of his son. He has made that abundantly clear because he is jealous for the Son's honor. The self-existent creator of heaven and earth, visible and invisible, the omnipotent king, the omnipresent Lord of glory, the all-knowing Most High God, has voluntarily wrapped up his own emotional wel welfare with our own. How we think, act, and speak truly affects the affections or emotional life of the Trinity. That is astonishing. It takes my breath away. And he takes our idolatry as spiritual adultery. Do you see that God wants your heart and not just your heartless obedience? Obedience, yes, but from the heart. Let us be faithful spouses, making God our first priority and seeking intimacy with him. Perhaps if we realize just how deeply personal God is with us, that will awaken us out of our cold-hearted, going-through-the-motions attitude. God wants your heart and is jealous for it, and he will not settle for anything less. Perhaps that perspective will enable you and me to overcome and to put to death sins in our life. Praise God that his name is jealous. Amen.